February meetup, uh, the HP Developer Community meetup. Uh, today we'll be talking about the project Galadriel. So if you are a Lord of the Ring uh, fan, you should be happy to hear about this one. Uh, it'll, it'll be mentioning Spire Federation at scale. So this will be presented by Max Lambrich and Maximiliano Turicci. And sorry if I misspell or mispronounce your name. I'm not used to speak Italian or uh, is that German or? German. Yeah. yeah, okay. Genau. So uh, before we start, there is a little housekeeping that we'll have to go through. Uh, and I'll take only like five minutes of your time before going to the real uh, subject, I would say. So uh, as you probably know, the, the developer meetups are a series of talks that uh, takes place on a monthly basis, just like the Munch and Learn. So there are, these are the two type of events that we usually uh, that we usually propose to the community. So the Munch and Learn, they're also occurring on a monthly basis. They're really sort of leadership type of vendors, product agnostic talk in mean, high level type of talk. The next one will take place on March the 15th and it will be about quantum computing insights from HP Labs. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary engineering and Tamil is not an option. And I have to look it up. Tamil means, and then a miracle of yours that I didn't know. And I need to, to check on Google to figure out what it was meaning. So it will be presented by Kurt Bresnicker from the HP Labs. And uh, there, will, there will be also uh, some forthcoming meetups that will take place uh, next month and at the end of the month. So on the, at the end of March, there will be a collaborating at scale with Postman by Brian Cross, a senior solution engineer from Postman. And on the, in April, there will be divide and conquer with micro frontends from Michel Sharma from Softworks. So if you wish to know about the different uh, session that uh, will take place or have taken place in the past, uh, I'm pretty sure that my colleague, either Mathieu or Denis, uh, will be providing you with the links uh, in, our, in our chat or Q&A. And you will have access to the replays of the, of the session that took place uh, in the past. And you will see also the possibility to register for these forthcoming sessions. Uh, on top of this, uh, there is also some other speed up activities that we are providing you uh, with. So the workshops on demand, that's my baby. Uh, so you can see that there are a, a number of workshops that are currently being proposed in our catalog. These workshops are Jupyter Notebook space. They're available 24 by seven. They're completely free and they're available to everyone, meaning either internally or to your customers. Uh, there are actually two workshops on Spiffy Spire. So there is a 101 session on uh, Spiffy Spire, and there is a second, more advanced uh, workshop on um, using X509 uh, security figures into the uh, uh, Spire um, layer, I would say. So check it out, and uh, they're available, and you can try them. It's uh, fairly easy. Uh, as you can see, there are about uh, 29 of them, of workshops, 15 of them being open source. The rest is uh, cover, is covering different subjects from HPE I and mean, solutions like, uh, you know, the ILO, it could be uh, Esmeral, uh, Runtime, and some others. From an open source uh, standpoint, uh, it ranges from, you know, discovering Kubernetes with the 101 session, Git 101, or things like uh, programmatic languages like Python or REST, for instance. Uh, <clears throat> as you know, this is a community and uh, the community is only worth for all its members. And so we need you to amplify and participate to the community and contribute. So we can ask you to join and invite some others to join our folks doing meetups or uh, mention learns. Uh, you can also join and subscribe to our newsletter. It's only once per month, and it will not be. We, we won't be floating your email with this. This is the the newsletter is only summarizing the activities of the group, uh, giving you insights on uh, the forthcoming events and uh, the forthcoming workshops that we've been doing, the blogs that have been written uh, lately, and so on and so forth. Should you be looking for some support? Well, there is a Slack channel that is uh, held by the, the HP Dev community. Uh, this allows you to interact directly with some of the developers of the different solution, the Inspire or 
some of the stuff, I mean, uh, like storage and so on. So this will provide you through different channels or workspace uh, a, dir a direct access to some developers uh, to figure out um, how to solve an issue. If you're having uh, much more hair than me and you're younger, then you're probably a Twitter guy. And so you can have a, a look at our handle, which is HP underscore developer. And finally, if you're a subject matter expert and you would like to contribute with us or work with us, well, you can actually write a blog and provide us with some, uh, I would say, relevant content on a given subject uh, that you can share with the community. Uh, you can also reach out to us and provide us with some subject that you would like to be talking about, either in a meetup or in a mansion man. So, and you would like again to share with the community. Finally, if you want to work with me, I'll be very happy to introduce you to our workshop on demand technology and uh, possibly create some content that would be also relevant to the rest of the community. So with that being said, these are all the links that we need to know about, uh, and uh, they're summarizing the different activities. If you have a smartphone, you can actually use the QR code, and it will provide you a page with all the different links as well uh, from, uh, from our developer community. With that being said, uh, I think I can leave now the floor to Max and Maximilio, if I remember well, and uh, they will talk to you about if inspire and everything you need to know on the given subject of today. So this is all yours. I will stop sharing. It's now your turn. Uh, my name is Max Lambrecht. I'm security engineer at HPE. And today, me and my colleague uh, Maximiliano Turici will delve into the Galadriel project, which aims to facilitate um, Spire operation at scale. Um, before we explore Galadriel's significance, um, let's us first familiarize ourselves with some concepts and, and projects that are fundamental to understanding the Galadriel project objectives. So a traditional approach to security uh, is this perimeter-based model, which is which focuses on securing a perimeter or boundary of a network using, for example, firewalls. And this approach assumes that the devices and users inside the perimeter can be trusted, and the primary goal is to prevent that unauthorized access from the outside. So inside the perimeter, connections are trusted, and then two workloads, uh, when two workloads need to connect across untrusted networks, uh, they use these secure connections like VPNs. And this assumes that um, inside the perimeter, things can be trusted and that the threats are outside. Um, and if we can keep the bad guys out, we are, we are safe. Um, so the main drawback of this perimeter-based model is that it does not account for threats that originate from within the network. So insider, insider threats such as a compromised device can bypass uh, perimeter-based security measures and potentially cause change. Also, additionally, perimeter-based security can be difficult to implement in this increasingly decentralized and cloud-based uh, computing environment where the perimeter is very difficult to, to define, to establish. Uh, so in this era of um, multi-clouds and microservices architecture, um, the printer has become untenable. So as a result, a new security paradigm called Zero Trust has emerged, which assumes that no device or user or service uh, can be trusted based on the fact that it's inside a perimeter. So access control is strictly enforced um, based on continuous authentication authorization checks. So now every connection should be secure, authenticated, authorized, encrypted inside the perimeter as well. It doesn't mean that the perimeter is no longer there, uh, that the perimeter is no longer use, used. It doesn't disappear. Is that we no longer trust things because they are within a perimeter. 
So now two workloads, two services connecting, starting a conversation need to be able to identify themselves in a secure way. So they can know they are talking to a peer, they are allowed to, they're, they're supposed to be talking to based on policies. So how do we do that? So we able to do that, we need workload identities. And this is where Spiffy comes um, in handy, comes to the picture. So Spiffy is a open source project. It's an open source set of standards or specifications for software identities. It defines how an identity is um, encoded, how it's delivered. Um, and it starts by defining a very simple thing, this is PFI ID, how an identity is represented. So this PFI ID defines the structure of a workload identity in a very simple way. It's an URI with a spiffy schema, the name of the trust domain that is a very important concept will define in a minute. And then in the path, there goes the, the workload name. And then um, spiffy also defines how this identity is encoded in a cryptographically document. Um, this in a cryptographic document this is the SBIT, this um, cryptographically verifiable document that encodes SPFA IDs, uh, SPFA identities. And this is basically a certificate with a SPFA ID in it. Uh, and currently, X finance certificates and show tokens are supported by the SPFA spec. And now that we have um, uh, these two workloads, each one has its own identity, its own spiffy ID, and a certificate uh, asserting that identity. They can use that to prove that they are who they are um, and they can connect sec securely. And what is this trust domain? Um, so a spiffy trust domain is like a namespace for identities. It's like a logical security boundary that defines an identity namespace. So all identities in the same trust domain share a common trust relationship, share a common set of root public keys and can securely communicate with each other using the spiffy identities. So all workloads in the same trust domain can verify identities using these root public keys of the trust domain. And this set of public keys is defined the SPIFI specification as, um, as a SPIFI trust bundle. This, this trust bundle conveys public key materials of a trust domain that workloads use to verify SPIFI identities, uh, SPIFI identity documents. So Woglet gets their identity documents, these SVITs, and the trust bundle that they will use to verify identities in the same trust domain. So how this Woglet get their SVITs, their identity documents and trust bundles? And see, this um, achieved through another specification. This is the Woglet API. It's a local API. Um, that workloads can connect to to obtain their identities and all their identity materials they need to connect to other workloads to verify their um, identities in the same trust domain. And then we have Spire. So Spire is a uh, spiffy implementation, a complete implementation of all the SPIFI standards. And Spire can be seen as an identity control plane that acts as a um, certificate authority and as a registration authority. So it both registers identities, manage identities in a trust domain and signs identity documents and delivers them in a, in a trust domain. So Spire has two main components. One is the Spiffy, this Spire server, which is responsible for managing the identities. 
so it acts as a registration authority and for issuing uh, identity documents. So it acts as a certificate authority. Another component is the SPIRE agent that is responsible for obtaining a set of the identities for serving the Google API so the Google can connect to it uh, to get their, their identities. So, so far we can deliver validated identities in one trust domain, right? What do we have? Workload services that need to connect, um, and they are they belong to different trust domains. Um, in this case, it's two workloads from different trust domains. We'll not be able to verify each other because they have different trust bundles with different root, root public keys. So the, the identity documents in one trust domain cannot be verified in another trust domain. So they need to exchange trust bundles, need to share that those root public keys. And this is where um, spiferation comes into the picture. It's, um, Spiff defines this um the standard for this mechanism for, to exchange bundles across trust domains so it, it enables these two workloads to get the trust bundle of a foreign trust domains they, they need to connect to so they can validate identities from from this foreign trust domain um what speed federation does is defines a bundle endpoint so it's by servers can securely uh, exchange trust bundle. Um, so this file service expose a bundle endpoint to serve their own trust bundle and are, are able to consume the trust bundle um, served by other trust, uh, by other file servers in a, in a secure way. And this mechanism involves configuring bundle endpoints in each file server, configuring uh, each file server to consume trust bundle from other endpoints. And this can become very hard to manage when the number of trust domain and federation relationship uh, increases. And there are many file servers that need to expose and consume trust bundles from many other uh, file servers. So, this this uh, this doesn't scale very well so what if we could federate um in an easier way what if we could exchange trust bundles in a secure way but also in an easier and scalable way and this is the goal of project galadriel and now i hand off to maxi uh, to talk about galadriel Thank you, Max, um, and hello, everyone. Um, can I share my screen now? Can I hope you can, everyone can see it? Um, so what is Galadriel? Uh, it's a brief introduction to Galadriel. Uh, Galadriel is an open source effort initiated in HP, uh, whose main goal is to facilitate the operation of federation and large scale and a large deployments. Uh, so, this um, comes in handy when you have multiple trust domains that you want to federate, you want to have them trusting each other. And this is a high picture, how it works. Um, since first we have this central place, this central hub um, that acts uh, as, a, as a mechanism to exchange uh, those bundles between a number of different trust domains. So in a regular Spire Federation or Spire Federation, you have the trust domain A on the left-hand side connecting directly to the trust domain B on the right-hand side. Uh, so you have to go to the A and manually expose this endpoint Max mentioned. You have to open this port and then you have to configure it to in a way that it can reach the Spire Server B. So Spire Server B needs to do the same, needs to open this endpoint and needs to be configured to reach a uh, trust domain A. 
So, so far so good. You have two trust domains uh, configured to federate, to trust each other. But uh, by the moment you have a third trust domain, um, this start becoming a pain that you need to go to A and B and you have to reconfigure them to trust trust domain C, to exchange the value of trust domain C. And you need to do the same with B. And as you can see that the more, the more trust domain have, you have, the bigger scale, uh, more and more hassle is to to manage this uh, in a you know large scales of deployments. So this is how it works. Um, again, at a very high level, we go more deeper in some um, in a few slides. But first, we have this in the middle. We have this um, central hub, which is Galadriel, and in the left hand side, we have uh, our trust domain, our cryptographic boundary. Um, that is represented by the Spire server. And we have uh, these new components, one of the uh, key components of Galadriel, which is what we call the harvester. The harvester uh, is not more than an agent that is uh, located, uh, that is, sits next to the Spire server. It talks directly to the Spire server. Uh, it leverages the Spire APIs. Um, to connect to it, to command somehow the federation relationship that exists in that spy server. So the first thing this harvester does is to needs to uh, exchange or needs to send uh, this trust bundle to Galadriel. So first thing it does is to get uh, the trust bundle from uh, the this spy server and sends that to this central hub. This central hub. Uh, by the moment, only stores uh, these trust bundles, and it it knows where what trust domain this came from, uh, but it, it doesn't distribute it until not not for now. So, by the moment, uh, have your admin, you have your um, secops uh, team that they want to have uh, these two trust domain to trust to each other. They want to have them federated. You have services in one side uh, that need to talk to the other side. You go there and you go to the uh, to collateral and you configure this relationship. You say, okay, I need A talking to B, and well, you have to establish the relationship in only in this central place. By the moment you do that, uh, Galadriel um, takes that command and distributes and steers the distribution of the trust bundle that came from A all the way down to the, to the harvester in trust domain B. And trust domain B stores that foreign trust bundle in the spy server uh, in the trust domain B. So this has nothing to do with the trust domain that represents this trust domain B, but is uh, a foreign trust bundle an additional trust bundle uh, that Spire server stores. So now <clears throat> we have, <clears throat> we have um, let's say a workload B in the trust domain B that uh, we know that needs to talk to uh, a service uh, uh, another workload in the other trust domain. Uh, by the moment uh, we initiated, we were able to identify this workload B um, we need to tell Spire that this workload needs to uh, needs to communicate with this other uh, trust domain. So Spire, what it does is to distribute this foreign bundle to the workload B. But since uh, this is needs to be bidirectional, so we need each side being able to authenticate or to validate the, the identity of the other side. So <clears throat> we need to also do the same, but the other way around. We need to have the hardware server uh, talking to the Spire server B and sending uh, its bundle to, to, to Galadriel and then distribute it back to the hardware server in Trust Domain B who, who um, sets and stores that bundle in Spire server. And again, uh, we have this workload A configured to federate with the Trust Domain B. Uh, so in that way, we have Two workloads that are um, authenticated, that identify it, that 
we were told that they need to communicate with a foreign trust bundle. So they have not only its own trust bundle, but also the foreign trust bundle. So they can verify the identity on the other side. Um, so what is Galadriel? Uh, again, high level. Uh, Galadriel is, uh, is built on top of Spire, Spire PC Federation and Spire APIs. Um, it doesn't replace, uh, it's just, uh, it leverages the, the, the APIs that Spy already provides. Um, it's, um, it's a system to ease the management of federation in, uh, in complex environments. Uh, when you have the need to federate across multiple trust domain, uh, so that's where you can get most of it. And also it is central hub, this mothership that uh, steers the distribution. Uh, we see, as we see Spire as the identity control plate, we can see uh, Galari as the federation control plate that helps with the distribution and the, the um, exchange of those bundles across a number of trust domains. And uh, this is open source, of course. Uh, this is already public, uh, it's on GitHub. So. Uh, you can go there and leave your comments and, and play with this. And so what is not collateral? Uh, it, it, again, it's not a replacement for or PC Spy Federation. Uh, again, it's built on top. Uh, as you saw this harvester component is deployed as an independent uh, sidecar or agent. Uh, and it's not a Spy plugin. Um, Spy has this uh, pluggability system where you can write some uh, some plugins to accomplish some specific tasks. Uh, Galaria is not, it's not that, it's just uh, an independent component that sits next to Spire server and talks to it, but it's not, at least not yet, uh, a Spire plugin. So what are the, um, the pillars of Galaria or the main uh, the main goal so we want to keep inside when when we work on this um is that first uh, the this federation relationships we established in galatriel in central hub they 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 shouldn't be enough uh to start this bundle exchange uh, we need some sort of explicit mutual consent between the, the two uh, harvester that interact and they're gonna exchange bundles. Um, again, one other more important, one of the most important uh, features here is the bundle integrity mechanism that we're gonna talk next, which is a, a mechanism uh, to verify the, the source, the origin, and where uh, each trust bundle came from. Since uh, in a regular spider deployment, we have two spires talking to each other. We don't need that because we, we can easily identify in this peer-to-peer -peer communication where this bundle came from. But now we have this many in the middle. We have the harvester and the uh, central hub. We need a way to to verify the identity, the origin of the other trust bundles. And we need to do that in a cryptographic way. So let's talk a little bit about the components. There are three main components on Galadriel's architecture. And the first is the Galadriel server. And this is the, the main component, the main piece we have been talking, which is this central place where all the trust domain and trust bundles are stored. And this is where uh, all the trust bundles are, are, are distributed from. And it also, uh, this is where the these federation relationships and the consents of the different trust domains uh, are stored. The second component uh, is the Galadriel Certificate Authority or CA. Uh, this is this serves as the root of trust of this father father entity, in which all harvesters trust. Um, this is related with the bundle integrity uh, mechanism. We're going to talk next, but what it does, uh, the CA, is issues uh, some cryptographic identity material uh, to the harvesters, so they can 
sign the trust bundles they have, they can uh, prove that uh, they have the access or the permissions to represent uh, this trust domain. And the last components we have is this agent, this sidecar is the Galadriel Harvester. Uh, it's sitting next to the Spider server. And what it does is again, uh, drives uh, the distribution from the Spider server to Galadriel uh, from Galadriel uh, to the Spire server. It also, it's also involved in this bundle integrity mechanism uh, because it's the, the piece that signs the bundle and that verifies the bundle that came in uh, to make sure uh, they are legit and they are already, they are already consented to, to further with. Uh, this is also when you, uh, the tool you use to accept um, or deny the federation relationship that were established uh, in the collateral server. Uh, okay, now let's talk a little bit about this uh, bundle integrity mechanism. Um, as we as we we talked before, now that we have this many mill, we need to make sure that the harvesters uh, can prove they have access to the bundles. If they can represent. Uh, the bundles, the trust domains uh, of the spider servers uh, they have access to. So uh, here, three components, the two, the two of the components participate in this mechanism. First, we have the gallery server, the gallery CA, and the hardware server that is the one who has direct access to the spider server. First thing we need to do, uh, we need to onboard the harvester. We need to identify and define the harvester on both server and CA. Uh, they are completely isolated. The, the CA acts as a root as a, as a root of trust is the PKI, um, the certificate authority for all of the harvesters. So the server doesn't have access to it. Even if you compromise one the server, you cannot sign or you cannot uh, temper with other trust bundles and the same with the CA. If you compromise that, uh, you cannot distribute the bundles uh, even if you have the permissions to, to sign on behalf of another bundle, of another harvester. So, uh, so first thing you do is to uh, uh, start onboarding. Then um, you, <coughs> you um, uh, generate some sort of identity cryptographic material that you send from the both sides to the harvesters. And the harvesters uh, using that perform their security introduction to both sides independently. Uh, once they, they do that, uh, once they do that, it, it can it, it has the permissions to, to act on behalf of these spire servers. Uh, now um, we need to get uh, this signing material um, to prove to, to verify, uh, sorry, to sign the trust bundle, uh, this trust bundle we have access to. Um, first thing we do is we need to get some uh, cryptographic material that uh, the CA is going to provide. So we ask for that material uh, to the CA. The CA uh, returns back some, it's an actual um, cryptographic certificate that proves uh, that we, we have access to, that we, we are authenticated to the CI and we can uh, use that. And a key that is associated with this um, certificate to sign and to prove uh, that we have access to this file server and we can uh, sign, use that sign. So this is the next step. We use uh, this material we get from the CA to sign uh, the trust bundles from the spider server and we send that to the Galadriel server and again this stores there and it doesn't distribute that you have the the relationship defined so what happened next uh, we have let's say we have this uh, relationship already defined both harvesters already consented to uh, talk to each other to fail to each other and we have the harvester in the other trust domain, trust domain B, um, already authenticated with, with, with two components. So next thing 
the harvester uh, goes to the server and asks, hey, give me all the trust bundles that I am federated with. And from all the harvest, all the trust bundles this server has, it's going to return only the ones that are associated and federated with trust harvester. And it's going to send back all the information that the uh, first harvester sent. And the harvester, since they both trust in the same CI, CI uh, they it, it can uh, verify. It's going to actually going to run a couple of checks uh, to make sure this is a legit bundle was signed by someone he knows or someone he trusts. So it's rather, for example, runs that this identity that came from the server was issued by the CA. He knows uh, it's gonna make sure that this the bundle that came from it was actually signed by this certificate and this uh, trust domain belongs uh, to, to this bundle belongs to a trust domain. Uh, yeah, ready for the sense uh, to participate to, to federate with. Um, so, okay, we we have prepared a, a short demo. Um, this is a, a POC we work on a couple of months back. Uh, this is not yet feature set complete, uh, but the idea was to uh, experiment or. Uh, play with the concept of this uh, bundle exchange, having this uh, money in the middle, having these harvesters, and this Galadriel server um, acting on behalf of the spider servers. Uh, it doesn't implement some of the concepts like the bundle integrity and this CA component. Uh, we are currently working on this, uh, but let me uh, show you. Okay. <clears throat> We're gonna run a couple of scripts. I'm not gonna go deep on each of the, the scripts we're gonna run because, uh, sorry, actually first, we wanna talk about the demo before going into. Um, this is the, the map of the demo, the architecture, and what we're gonna see. We're gonna set up everything uh, from scratch. So we're gonna set up two trust domains, like trust domain one and trust domain two, each, Trust me, it's going to have Spire server that it's going to represent, it's going to uh, run uh, this trust domain, it's going to store this trust bundle. And it's going to have an agent uh, on each side. This agent is connected to each of the Spire servers. And we're going to have uh, a workload on each of the sides. So we have first on the left hand side, we have the Gritter server, which is a simple application we borrow from, from Spire code which is not more than a gRPC server that uh, gets an identity from Spire. And using that identity uh, opens this endpoint and a greeter, a greeter client using this interface can talk to the server. I can uh, request the server to say something on, on its behalf. Uh, so dummy example, so we have two Greeter and server, uh, greeter and, and um, client and server, uh, they both have its own identity, but they are in the different trust domain. So they cannot verify each other's identity unless uh, we share the bundle. That's what we're going to do with, uh, with the harvesters and the Galadriel server. So what we do is we, we're going to set up Aspire uh, uh, Galadriel server in the middle, which is, that is uh, behind these trust domains. It's not inside of any of these trust domain. And we're gonna use uh, two harvesters sitting uh, next to each of the Spire servers we're gonna have. And we're gonna federate them using Galadriel and to have uh, those the, the, the bundles exchange uh, from one to two and from two to one, so they can validate the identity on the other side. Um, okay, now we can we can run the demo now. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna we're gonna set up um, the Spire servers. Uh, nothing fancy here. If you are familiar with Spire, this is a very simple configuration. Uh, this is the configuration from one of the Spire servers we have. 
Uh, the most important lines here is, is that this configuration uh, represents the trust domain one.org and we have a TTL CA TTL of three minutes. This has nothing to do with Galadriel CA. Uh, this is this tells Spire how often um, it's going to rotate uh, its trust manual. So one of the, the benefits of Spire is that we get automatic rotation of Spire. So every three minutes, we're going to get a new trust bundle. Um, even though three minutes is probably not a real world, not something you're going to use in your deployment, but uh, we, need, we need to set it to a very uh, short period of time so we can exercise this bundle exchange continuously. So every three minutes, we're going to get a new trust bundle. And the harvesters are, are going to get the new bundle and perform the exchange. So the workloads that need to talk to each other, they're going to get always the most recent bundle. The minute they don't get the most recent bundle, uh, they're going to be unable to communicate. They're going to be unable to validate each other's identity. So let's uh, let's run let's run the the file server first. Okay, we're gonna see all the logs uh, in the same terminal uh, in different colors, just to facilitate here. Uh, we see that Spire server started correctly. Now we're gonna do the same with the agents. Uh, this is pretty much the same, nothing fancy, just two regular spy agents that are configured to talk to a, a different Spire server. They're gonna be the ones that distribute the identities, that validate the workload identities, and they're gonna distribute the, the, these identities to the greater client and the server. So we have one on each trust domain. We have uh, here in trust domain one, uh, we see that the node detection was successfully. This means that this agent, um, was uh, was able to authenticate to the server in trust domain one and we have the same in trust domain two in trust domain two we have the we know that they completed the the node attestation successfully so we now have spire set up um very straightforward and now we're gonna run our spire our Galadriel server nothing fancy here just uh, it opens um, a TCP connection, a TCP listener, TCP port that uh, where all the harvesters can, can talk to it. We're gonna we're gonna uh, run into this here. So, okay, the, the next step. We we say that we need to onboard this harvester. We need to introduce them to the to the Galactic server. So what we do here. Uh, is we tell the Galadriel server that we're gonna to onboard a new member or a new trust domain uh, named one.org in this case and two.org in this case. So what we tell Galadriel uh, is that two new trust domains and uh, we need to get them connected uh, to it uh, so they can start pushing their own bundles to Galadriel. Uh, so Galadriel is gonna store the bundles uh, they send. But we want them to also exchange the bundles. And that's what we do we create it, like when we create a relationship. We create a relationship between a uh, one.org and two.org. And that's how we tell the server, the Galadriel server, that it's gonna, that needs to distribute uh, these bundles. So let's run this. Okay, we got the output, the web successfully created. And the last thing we do, well, not the last thing, but uh, Galadriel wise, we need to, we're gonna run the harvesters. Again, nothing fancy here, just running two harvesters. They're gonna, are this harvester we're gonna talk, we're gonna, we're gonna have one harvester on each trust domain uh, connecting to each of the Spire servers. Um, there is also some onboarding process. They're going to use some sort of um, token to connect, securely connect to the server. Um, but yeah, we're going to go into the details now. 
So, okay, we run this. Uh, we make sure that they connect to the server. To connect to the server, and we can start seeing that uh, as soon as they start, uh, they're gonna start looking uh, for bundle changes. So, in this case, we have here the trust domain one. Uh, it's gonna keep looking. Uh, if the bundle of the trust of the trust of the, of the spider server it is connected to has changed, by the minute change, it's gonna push that to the server. We're gonna share that to the larger server, and the trust domain and the harvest server trust domain too is gonna do exactly the same. So by this moment, the larger server has the two the two trust bundle from the two uh, trust domains. Now, uh, since we also established the relationship in the previous step, uh, they're going to also start exchanging the trust bundle. Uh, here, for example, we see that in the trust bundle one, uh, we have here the logs that it's setting a new federated bundle. The, this new federated bundle is the bundle that came from the other side from file server two. And in file server two, we got the same. So by now, the two spider servers, they already have uh, the, the, these 40 new trust bundles. Now we, we need to, we need to um, identify our workloads, our client and the server, and we need to we're gonna prove that uh, they are now being able to, to, they are now able to talk to between them. So first thing we do, uh, this is a process called workload attestation in Spire. Um, what you do is you define uh, CD fast selectors or attributes uh, that you want to you want to check when someone when a workload uh, try to get its identity. So all the, all of all all, the, all of what the workload needs to do is just talk to Spire and he, he says, "Hey, give me my identity." Uh, it doesn't need to present anything, no secret. Um, just use the selector and, and the spider is going to be able to, to identify uh, who's talking, who's trying to get this identity. And if it has an identity that matches the selector, it's going to give back uh, this uh, identity, this cryptographic material. So we define two identities here. Uh, the first one is the server, the Utah server, and the trust main one. Uh, this is the PPID the name that represents uh, this identity. And this, even though this belongs to trust domain one, uh, we also are saying to Spire that we want this, this workload, this identity to be federated with trust domain two. This way we make sure that this uh, identity gets not only its own trust bundle from its own trust domain, but also the trust on, the trust bundle from trust domain two. So this way can uh, identify or can validate the identity of another workload in trust domain two. Now, this is what we do for the server, and we do pretty much the same for the uh, client. Uh, the client is in the second trust domain, trust domain two, and uh, we set this to be federated with trust domain number one. Again, it's going to get uh, two trust bundle from two because it is uh, its own trust domain and the trust bundle from trust domain uh, one. Now, okay, we have everything set up. We can now run uh, the client and the server. Uh, first thing we're gonna see is the server, the greeter server uh, is gonna try to get its identity from Spire. The moment it has uh, its identity, it's gonna open this endpoint, uh, this endpoint, and it's gonna use the certificate uh, it got from Spire uh, to, to serve this endpoint. And then we're gonna see the client. The client is gonna do pretty much the same. It's gonna go to Spire and get its identity, its cryptographic material, and it's gonna try to reach uh, the endpoint that was opened by the server, by the, the greeter server. But it's, gonna to it's going to present the identity he got from, from its own trust domain. So uh, 
since they both have uh, each other trust domain, they're going to be able to validate each other's identity, even when they are in two completely different trust domains. So we are going to run this. We first see the server uh, serving on this port. And then we have we see the agent. Uh, it's going to get uh, its identity. And it's going to, every 10 seconds, it's going to try to say something to, to uh, talk to the server. And we see here from the logs from the server that it gets uh, um, a request from the Gritter client uh, that requested to say hello, speed the community. And the client gets the response back uh, that saying is that, okay, the Gritter service says on behalf of Spiffy, hello, speed the community. So you have two uh, workloads talking to each other, uh, even when they are in different trust domain, kind of effortless. <laughs> Um, but well, this is it. Um, now, uh, this is the, the repository. Uh, this is a uh, public repository. Uh, so please, if you are interested, if you want to know more, uh, this is the place to go. Uh, you can find there the roadmap, uh, the design document. Um, you can also, if, if you're interested and want to start a discussion, you can open an issue. If you want to collaborate, participate, please open an issue, uh, pull requests, or whatever you need. Uh, there is also um, a channel, uh, a Galadriel channel in the Spiffy Slack. Uh, if you want to reach out to Max, to me, or anyone else in the team, uh, this is the place to go. And I think that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, back to you, Fred. Okay, well, thanks a lot, uh, both of you. I mean, uh, it was a very, very interesting session. It uh, created many, many, many questions, and I'm pretty sure that Max was uh, quite busy during all the time answering the question from what I saw. I saw 18 questions being answered, and there are still some coming in. So maybe you can answer this one while I'll be sharing my screen. So the spiff ID has no relation to the service host name, DSNS name, for instance, greater.example.com. Are these spiffy ID always generated using some random ID like Unix ID, et cetera? So no, the, the spiffy ID doesn't have that direct relation with the host name or DNS. Uh, what they do is they have um, this uh, schema, the spiffy schema, uh, it's spiffy colon slash slash. They have the trust domain slash the something else. This something else, uh, you can define it, um, you can define whatever you want. Uh, in this case, I use Gritter server and Gritter client, but it can be anything you want. Oh, let me ask for your question. Thanks a lot. Uh, there was a question from Giuliano uh, Fantanzi. Although this shouldn't be a concern for Galadriel itself, it's about Spire. I don't believe we run a specific test for this, but this is an interesting consideration. So I don't know, this came up uh, some time ago in the, during the discussion. So you're on mute, Max, so I don't know uh, if you can answer. No, that's, that was part of uh, the response of another comment, yeah, another question. Oh, okay, yeah, so, okay. I don't know how it... Yeah, okay, that's fine then. Uh, okay. So, okay. so uh, before everyone leave, I would like to bring up the poll. And if you have just a sec, uh, this will take you only a minute to answer the, the poll that comes at the end of the session. It's just uh, to see whether it was a good use of your time, the technical level, and so on and so forth. But I think uh, you you did a really good job, Max and Max, if I can say so, Maxi and Max. Uh, that was really, really interested, and I'm pretty sure that uh, people uh, seems to be uh, answering that the technical level was just right. And it was a real good time uh, of your time as well. So it seems that you did the job perfectly. So thanks a lot again for your for this uh, great meetup. Uh, keep in mind that there are other meetups coming in. So as we already uh, put in the uh, Q&A, you can have the link of the forthcoming session. This one is recorded, obviously, and it will be made available in our replay section in the meetup page of the hpdev.io website. And usually it takes only uh, a week. So whenever Didier is coming back from his wonderful holidays in the, in the Alps, 
he'll be tackling this and he'll be making sure that the replay will come online in duty time, I would say. With that being said, we have still a very few minutes to go. So if there are any other questions, uh, so there is, uh, well, there are questions coming in and I can see that Max is already answering them. So that's fine. And if you have other questions, please, uh, bring them in in the Q and A, and I'm pretty sure that uh, either Maxi or Max will will make sure to answer them. Okay. So we have like uh, well, on my on my watch two minutes to go. So if no other question, and I will leave time for Max to answer the last one. And it should be fine then. Okay. There was one question from uh, from Fl Florian who was wondering where you could get the wonderful T-shirts that we're all wearing. So unless being part of a, a KubeCon event and having the chance to meet these uh, species pyre guys, I don't know whether you can actually get them internally. So maybe Florian would advise you to get in touch with either Max or Maxi and see whether they have some left in their stock. <laughs> I wouldn't know, but unless you attend a, a KubeCon event or any open source event in which uh, Spiffy Spire is presenting, there is little yeah. chance you get your hands on. I one. got mine. I got mine in uh, KubeCon. Yeah, same, same as me. Well. So yeah. that's how it works. So I think we've got everything. And so I will thank you everyone. And I will hope to see you back in the next uh, meetup next month. With that being said, I wish you a very good end of your day and thanks again for this wonderful session. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.